Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Firstly I must mention the gameplay that's playing in the background. I didn't really quite know how to overlay this video so what I did is I revisited one of my childhood favourite games, uh, Metrocross, which I used to play on the Atari ST. So that's what you can see playing there. Obviously it's a bit of a light-hearted uh, juxtaposition to the, the subject nature of this video but uh, I didn't want to include gambling footage or anything that's likely to uh, trigger gambling thoughts in the, the minds of people who are watching this who I hope are here to uh, listen to, to what I've got to say and use it as part of their recovery. Now what I want to talk to you about today is one of the biggest misconceptions I believe in and amongst problem gamblers and that is of course that it's a financial problem. Now this was brought to my attention actually by a friend of mine who I often go out for a beer or two with um, and we'll while we're out and about we'll play on the, the fruit machines in the pubs and we'll go into the bookies and play roulette that sort of thing. He often says to me when we're out particularly when he's lost a few quid that it wouldn't be a problem if he was earning more and he'll often cite even myself uh, and this isn't a, a brag of any description but I do earn a little more than this, this gentleman and he will say to me oh well if I was earning as much as you it wouldn't be a problem if I was earning what Elon Musk earns it wouldn't be a problem if I could get a pay rise this wouldn't be a problem and I believe that this is completely ignoring the root cause of the problem itself but yet it's a common misconception by gamblers and people with problem gambling and by myself historically to think that if you can earn more money that if you can resolve this financial issue that somehow all your problems will go away I believe it is essential for any problem gambler or any potential problem gambler to understand that this is not a financial problem. And likewise, that the solution to gam a gambling problem is not additional money. That simply perpetuates the issue. The basis of gambling addiction is actually an addiction to dopamine. It's an addiction to that buzz you get and the release of these endorphins while you're gambling. Naturally, as your income or your bank balance increases, or your, as in the case of most gamblers, your access to credit or your access to money increases, then you'll need higher and higher stakes to satisfy this urge uh, and to create this, this suspense and this dopamine fix, which is basically what our bodies are craving. This is why it doesn't matter whether you earn £10,000 a year or a million pound a year. All that will happen is if you increase your income, you increase your stake size, you increase your bet and you lose money at the same rate. And now a great example of this would be some very well-known footballers including the likes of Michael Owen who have lost millions and millions of pounds through gambling and through a gambling addiction. This to them is the equivalent of your average man in the street uh, losing a few thousand. It's all completely subjective. So the idea that if a gambler who owed say £10,000 suddenly was bailed out or was given extra funds that this would somehow solve the problem because they can now afford to gamble again is completely missing the point it's actually very dangerous because it's very possible that at some point a gambling addict may be offered a lifeline be that a financial lifeline from family or they may be able to get a, a consolidation loan or something that's going to resolve their financial situation to solve the financial problems they've caused through gambling if they are to believe that this is a solution to their addiction and to their problem, then all that is likely to happen is that the cycle will continue. More money will be borrowed, more money will be gambled, more money will be lost, and the financial situation will escalate. Now by this, it makes it sound like the bottom line is the financial problem. However, that whilst that's the most obvious and most experienced problem amongst people who gamble, this will also cause other problems. Gamblers will become withdrawn. The loss of the money will cause stress. And whilst this is a secret addiction, or as this is a secret addiction, it becomes significantly harder to explain these mood swings to loved ones, which can cause the breakdown of relationships with family uh, and with partners. You also may find that as a gambler, you become less sociable be this a direct result of a financial loss, i.e. you can't afford to socialise or attend social plans, or because the depression or the short-term um, psychological issues caused by a loss means that you, you no longer want to partake in social plans, or 
Thirdly, it may be that you're simply spending too much time gambling to attend social events, social occasions. Now, whilst financial problems are the most prominent and the most expected and the most understood amongst the fallout from problem gambling, ironically, it's actually the least significant in my opinion. Yes, of course, financial problems cause short-term issues. However, if you deal with the root cause of the problem gambling before it gets too far out of control, then ultimately the financial side will deal with itself. It may take time, but there's an awful lot of support, an awful lot of help out there for people with financial difficulties resulting from problem gambling. I will actually put some links in the description to UK-based services that can help uh, be that consolidate your debts and talk about the options of bankruptcy, IVAs, or as the majority of recovering gamblers with financial problems find, um, debt management programs are generally the, the best way to deal with your financial problems head on whilst maintaining a level of an affordability that will let you continue to live your life throughout your recovery period. As I say, the worst thing you can do as a problem gambler is believe that once your financial problems are sorted, your addiction is sorted. This is the worst possible way to approach it. Deal with the root cause of your gambling, be that through attending Gamblers Anonymous, be that through attending um, therapy, or through whatever means you choose, the money will take care of itself. This is not an area to dwell on. In fact, at the start of your recovery, it's critical to realise and to accept that the money you've lost has is gone. It's now in the hands of the gambling companies and you won't be getting that back. Actually, once you've accepted that the money's lost, then it's much easier to move forward with your recovery. Now, what I will do is include some links in the description to UK-based groups and to UK-based organisations that are designed to help problem gamblers in these initial stages of recovery. Thanks once again for clicking on this video. I do hope it's been of some help. What I'm trying to do is, in this series of videos is to get out there my experiences, both as a problem gambler and as a recovering gambler, and actually use that to try and help people in the early stages of their recovery. They won't all be quite this serious. I might put some out there that are a bit more entertaining, a bit more fun. Um, I'll also have some videos if you go back through the previous couple. Um, there's one there where I talk about roulette systems and the fundamental flaws in those. Again, I'll put a link in the description. So please do subscribe and please put those notifications on as well. And if this video is in any way helpful or you believe it would be helpful to anyone who is looking to start their recovery from gambling, then please do put a like on this video and this will hopefully help it reach a few more people. Yeah, so thanks once again for clicking on this video and for giving me a few minutes of your time today. I do hope you take something away from this and that you do come back and watch some of the other videos I've got coming out in the next few days and weeks. Thanks once again. Have a great gamble-free day and I'll see you again soon.